Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send a collection from your Power App to your Power Automate using the Power Apps version two action. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, SharePoint and Teams videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. Okay, so you're looking to send a collection from your Power App to your Power Automate for probably some reporting or to store on a table. Um, my previous video I did on this, I used the Power Apps version one. You're no longer able to do that anymore. Uh, there's only in this Power Apps version two right here and uh, the instructions for this are a little bit different. They're kind of the same, but you have to do some different steps. So it's gonna make a video how to do that. I'm going to be getting data from my employee data SharePoint list. I have my power apps. I'm just gonna store this data in a collection. So I'm gonna pick a couple columns from this SharePoint list, put it in a collection and then send that to Power Automate. Probably for, uh, I'll probably make like a CSV report, something easy. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this SharePoint list is actually in my, in my power app. So employee data is currently in here. I'm on my navigation screen right now. I'm just gonna copy these two and I'm just gonna use the button to create the collection. Create collection. And then let me use a clear collect, uh, call, col, employee data. And then if I wanted to get all this data, I would do employee data. I click on go. Double click on the collection. As you can see, all my records from my SharePoint list are now in my collection. As I said before, we are only going to use a certain amount of columns and we're going to do that by using the show columns formula. So let me see what columns I actually want. The title, the last name. So let me write this down. Uh, if you didn't know, you can make comments by doing on this syntax right here. So this opens it and that closes it. So let's just look back in there. I gotta rerun it. So let's also get a job title. That's a choice column. So maybe we gotta do something different with that. And then let me just go back to this list. It's probably easier. And we will do currently employed and start date. and start date okay so we're going to be using these five columns so let's go ahead and edit this uh, clear collect so we're going to do show columns so you're on, it's going to ask for your source and then you're going to do the column names in double quotes so i'm going to do title last name job title and we'll see what i have to do with that one since it's a choice field Currently employed and start date. If I click on go, you now have all these records. As you can see, it got rid of all the extra data. Job title, let's see if I can do like job title. Actually, I might just have to edit it in the Power Automate. This is right now it's showing it's a record. So it's going to be like an array, but maybe we can fix it in the Power Automate. So let me go ahead and switch over to Power Automate and name my flow. So we'll just do employee data collection create. And that's using the Power Apps version two. So I'm, I'll am kind of use the new designer. If I need to switch to the old one, I will do that because the new designer is um, a default. So the type of user input I want is going to be two text files. So this one's gonna be the collection. You're gonna to wanna to put nothing for your input, so just get rid of that. And then with the second one, we're just gonna to wanna to get the email of the employee. Um, that's actually press the button because that might be used to send an email or to send the report to. So the Powers version two, we just have two text fields. So let's go ahead and just add two compose statements right here. So compose, and then for the input, 
we're going to put the collection there and then we're going to do another compose and we're just going to put the email there click on save and actually let's go ahead and rename these so we'll just do collection and then email save that up so it's going to put the collection data in the first compose and the employee email in the second one so let's go ahead and import this flow employee data collection it should appear right away as long as it's saved and on this uh, button action we will actually go ahead and just put the uh, flow there so you're going to want to do i believe it's the name of the of the flow i have to put a semicolon there so it actually populates so employee data dot run and then we're going to want to do json so we're going to want to put that collection data in json format so it's going to be employee data and we're going to do comma ignore binary data and then we are also going to do i believe it's the and um, check now we're going to do ignore unsupported types and then we're just going to close up that first json statement and then for the second one we're going to do user dot email that will give us the email of the user so let's go ahead and click on run um, if you need to i'll zoom in for this so that's the formula right there the collection name is going to be whatever you named your collection as well Let's go ahead and click on go and see if this actually runs correctly. So we'll go here and as you can see it ran correctly. So you're gonna to wanna to check the output because we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and control A on the output, control C. That's gonna select everything right here and that's going to copy it. So we have all the data right here and then the email actually came in as well. Go ahead and click on edit. And we're going to add an action here. We're going to do parse JSON. And for the schema, you're going to want to click on use sample payload to generate schema. I'm going to insert your schema right there. And we're going to get the content from collection. Uh, it's going to be whatever you name the compose action. Uh, let's just go ahead and check this JSON. Sometimes you might have to edit it yourself, but as you can see, everything looks pretty good. I don't have any null values. If you did have a null value in here, let's say um, one of my users didn't have a last name, you're gonna wanna put a bracket and then also put null right here and then close that up. Um, it doesn't really make a difference if I didn't have any null values. I can also have this in the code. It's just looking for a specific type for that. I'll make all these nulls you don't have to do this but if you do have blank values you could run into some issues so let's just go ahead and save this and rerun the previous we're just checking the outputs um just as a safe measure because if you add too many actions and then go to test it you can have like an issue in one of the first ones and uh not really too good to have troubleshooting we're just gonna look at the output it looks okay so as you can see, currently employee, true, job title. We got the last name, start date, and the title. So we got all the information we wanted. Um, it successfully sent that over. So let's just go ahead and create a CSV table. So create CSV table under data operations. And we want to get the array from the body parse JSON. And we will go ahead. So if I click on advanced parameters, I might need to do something since I had that choice field. It's an array. So I probably need to map these all out individually. So if you do have choice field, you're probably going to have to do this because you don't want the, you just want the value from the job title. You don't care what position it's in, in the array. If you don't have a choice field, you don't have to do this. But if you do, you probably have to do this. I'm going to map all these out. I do need a first name, a last name, a start date, currently employed in job title. We're going to do first name, last name, job title, 
currently employed. And I might have to move my camera. And then the last one was favorite fruit, I think. No, start date. Okay, so we have to enter all these values in manually. So let's go ahead. And since I'm already pulling it from the body of the parse JSON, I should just have to do a custom expression, which is item uh, parentheses question mark. And then just list out those names from your parse JSON. So my first name was actually the title. We'll just go back and check. Last name, start date, a job title. So last name, it's going to do item, a bracket, last name. And this is probably like a little more advanced than what a regular user has to do. Because once you get into like writing custom expressions, it's a little difficult. But if you've done it a lot, kind of easier. So since I just want the value from the job title, I'm just going to do an item, parentheses, question mark, put the job title in the brackets and single quotes, another question mark, and I'm just putting value in single quotes and, and in brackets. And then we'll just do currently employed. So this is item. currently employed and this is a boolean value so it's going to show as true or false i know some people like it yes no but i already made a video on changing boolean values to yes no's so if you like want to see that go ahead and check out my channel and then the last one we have to do a start date and there we go so we have all the custom ones I'll just go ahead and save this and we'll see if the CSV actually generated it correctly. Automatically. Oh, this one's taking a while. Maybe something is screwed up. No, it's just taking a while. It ran successfully, so let me back out and go back in it. Okay, we have everything right here. And then we got our create CSV table. And it looks like everything was good. Besides the start date, the start date wasn't found. Did I misspell it or something? Let's just check it out really quick. CSV table, start date. I think I put the space in there. Let's just redo that really quick. So start date, and then it is item. Start date, because that's how it looks in my JSON. So maybe I put the space in it. We'll just check it again really quick. And it's going to glitch out again. So let's back out, go back into it. And we have the dates right here, so it works. I guess I'll just throw it in a quick CSV file. Um, that's pretty much how you bring data from a collection in your Power App to Power Automate. I'm just putting it in a CSV collect a CSV file for you. So you can actually see. I'm just gonna list it in my marketing site. Just put it in the um, documents folder, which is share documents, name of file. CSV. Actually, we'll just do marketing employee data. Make sure you put the file extension on this, so .csv, and we're going to put the content of the file as the create CSV output. We're going to save this. And so since I do have a different connector, I have a SharePoint connector, as you can see, um, it has that SharePoint icon right here. I'm going to have to re-import it into my Power App again, so we're going to go ahead and remove from app. And that's best because it added a new collector to that flow that wasn't previously in there. So he's got to re-import it and that'll solve the issue. And let's just go ahead and our on select. Let's go ahead and add a notify there. A flow has ran, file created. Close that up. Let's go ahead and click on it to create the collection, then create the file, run the flow. Just go ahead and see. It looks like it ran successfully. Let's go into our documents folder. Uh, let's go to modified all the way newer to older. And we have the employee data.csv. Let's open it in the browser. And we have all our data right here. Let's just go ahead and make this a table really quick.
and there we go we have all of our data right here so i hope you guys enjoyed the video um i had to put out an update video because the v1 connector isn't active anymore so pyros version 2 is good uh, if you enjoyed the video feel free to like comment subscribe if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and i will catch you in the next video